show produced by Fordham University Cyberspace students. We like to talk to under the radar bands and find out about their under the radar music. Tonight we'll be talking about Smart Mob. They're an up and coming band. They formed back in 2007 from three members. Robbie Fox, JC, and Magic. Each trying to make it online and none of them could do it on their own and without a manager. Tonight we're going to find out about that story and where the music industry lies today. Somewhere between the traditional record producer and the online YouTube artist. I am so excited to introduce the first member of the band, Mr. Robbie Fox, the Pop Prince. Now, he's joining us. Robbie, thank you so much for coming today. Hi, thank you so much, Robbie. So happy to be on this fantabulous show. <laughs> All right, Robbie, let's get started. Now, you mentioned earlier that BitTorrent and P2P programs have kind of declined in popularity. Can you talk a little bit about that in regards to sampling and everything else that's going on online right now? Sure. Um, I think we all have to start with the long tail analysis. That was um, a, a great book that helped us, you know, help, help our careers. BitTorrent and the P2P did not necessarily slow our brick and mortar sales. It actually expanded our pop popularity. Oh, okay. P2P software and free samples on our social networking site and our channels of communication are peer and the American consumer. As Anderson would agree to this, digital music can contribute to economic growth and offer a decent price to those that desire to try something new. P2P and sampling work hand in hand. It's like offering freemium content. You know, free plus premium. <laughs> Robbie Fox, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much, Robbie. Thank you so much. It was fantabulous. You're fantabulous. Peace. <laughs> Ladies, I know you like this guy, JC, the Latin lover of Smart Mob in our studio today. Thank you, JC. But first off, just tell me about how your career started and when you decided to get together with people who are so different from you in Smart Mob. Um, well, my career begins basically on MySpace as one of those artists that you see featured on MySpace. I had a bunch of my music there. I look into like even out the Power Law distribution by getting uh, um, our record label, Real Mix Records, and by getting um, together with um, our manager. So we're looking to like ride the wave and continue to, to drive it after that. So it's not just about us selling. And if we all offer different types of music styles and put them together, we could also be like the music type of Netflix that Netflix has been for the movie industry. So we could do this together, us three. How do you feel that the long tail will affect your band? Yeah, well, Anderson talks a lot. I, Anderson, I've read him for a class that I had to read him in, and he was very, very interesting. And it, some of the most successful internet businesses have, li have used the long tail as part of their businesses. Um, our band offers a wide variety of content, so it, and the individual can pick and choose which ones they like. And um, also, we have to talk a little bit about in the internet and Google. And the more hits we get on our MySpace page, and the more that, that you guys want to listen to our music, the more that Google will push us up and make us more and make our music more aware to not only our small audience but to more audiences. And we also look up for our record label. Our record label is going to be great, and we're we're releasing a mixtape soon that. Um, you guys are going to like, and we're, we hope the audience will like it a lot. All right, so basically, you take the best of both worlds. You take the long tail, you take the traditional. That's what you guys are doing. You're putting it all together. Yeah, it's applying the long tail to traditional methods that have been used in the music industry. That's amazing. Thank you so much, JC. Thanks for having us. And also to the audience, remember, our mixtape's dropping soon, and it's going to be produced by Remix Records. Now we move to the rapper of the group, Magic. It's so great. Now, tell me a little bit about your background. Where, how did this all start for you? Yeah, but it's the same story. You know, I started spitting my rhymes on YouTube. My fan base was growing, you know, but it wasn't too big, though, because my brand of rap is unique, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, only people who truly appreciate the art form of hip-hop really liked it. But I had some fans, you know? And uh, for some of my tracks, I had sampled these Tupac beats. And I wasn't stealing, you know? I did it as a tribute. But the record company was bugging, and so YouTube pulled my videos. But then, then what? You know, I had no connection to my fans. You know, I think it's like that guy, uh, Dr. Lessig said, you know, the guy that has copy left. Mm -hmm. He says record companies have too much power. I don't know, man, but after that, my career was at a standstill, and I didn't know what to do. You basically have a completely different background than the other two guys in the group. So, what's your approach to the long tail? The long tail is basically a simple method of marketing. You know, any product through search engines. People can search for very specific terms relating to the exact item that they're looking to buy 
But if you can list all the features in various formats, then you can gather more viewership, you know, and sell more stuff. So I think the best example is would be like the new uh, iTunes Genius. You know, it, Genius uses iTunes data to build to build your own, your own music list based on the stuff that you like and so on. So a small band like us will not be flagged on the you know if you like this try blah blah blah. Yeah. You know, so at some level it's all about the marketing and promotion. And I believe if you rise first rapidly, peak and transition into the long. All right, now I'm going to kind of change it up a bit. Your stuff is on iTunes and YouTube right now. Now, are you guys afraid that the App Store is going to become kind of nothing more than something that provides a lot of low quality product to the consumer? Probably yes and probably not. You know, <laughs> I mean, I'm not an expert on this, but local and less popular groups tend not to show up too frequently, you know? So on YouTube is based on ratings and viewers. So there may be very may, many amateurs out there in various tales and with many niche groups, but only a handful will show on the top, let's say, you know, three, five pages. Mm -hmm. Band like us may not show up when we reach out more. I think amateur content will be helpful to everyone. It just shows talent. I totally agree with you, Magic. Thank you so much for being here today. It was a pleasure. All right, now we have the lady behind the professional side of things for this band. Her name is Jamie Johnson. Well, now to start things off, how did you hear about the guys? How did you know about Smart Mob? Well, I mean, they came to me because they were all individual artists with very individual and unique fan bases, and these fan bases were all very small, so they realized that they needed to join together and bring their fans together so that they could have more popularity, and they needed someone to manage them in that ordeal so that they could have more value to their music and sell their music and make money and become more successful. So would you say that Smart Mob has kind of found their beacon of light within their niche? <laughs> yeah, I would say so. In their individual mm -hmm. niches that they brought together um, to create, you know, a more of a, a hit culture rather than just the small niches that they appeal to. So yeah, they found the light. <laughs> All right, um, now from my experiences, and I actually even shared this with the guys from Smart Mob, uh, socially connected groups kind of tend to clump together in their tastes, which could definitely be a problem for startup bands. So now, do you feel that kind of one celebrity could sort of take all the fame and leave the amateurs in the dust? Well, Google has claimed that network effects create the winner-take-all consequences. So my answer is that Fortunately, me social media creates an infinite number of networks, many of them focus on niche subjects so that many winners can take all of their micro, mar micro market while still having the collective effect of redistributing demand in the entire market and with variety. This is called fractal dimension. So basically the small markets make up the bigger picture. Jamie Johnson, thank you so much. It has been a pleasure. She's been a music producer for 10 years at Real Mix Records. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Here and without further ado, we have to debut this video. It's We Finally Got This by Smart Mom. We were far apart from each other, so far. Barely knew one another, was alone with my guitar. Searching around cyberspace, I really needed my own place. But alone we were a race. Learn that with the label, our band could be more stable and become a hit. <laughs> Finally got this. Three niches, dancing with the devil. Merge like Voltron, never getting on my level. We read in the long tail, all your rhymes is stale. When niche genres merge, we get our checks in the mail. Cha-ching! on YouTube. Estaba pasado en mi, my niche was nice, but my career needed some spice. Uh. YouTube pulled our MP3s and now we're trying to rewrite our destinies. Uh, smart mob, three pieces to the puzzle. <laughs> we finally, finally got, got this. Yeah, guys, I think we got it. That was Smart Mob. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the forum. We hope to see you again soon. Have a great night.